So now it's time to focus on the controller because now we want to return the products, right? Now, first of all, we don't have products on the table, but let's see what happens when you don't have a data in the table and still even when you try to fetch it. Of course, we'll get blank, but let's do that. So let's go to the product controller and here we want to create a method which will return you the list of products and the URL would be slash products. We have tried that before, right? So if you go back to your browser and here we are asking for products, it is giving you 404. We don't want this. So I will go back here and let me say create a method which will return the list of products because we don't have one product. We'll be having list of products. So list of products, get all products. Of course, you can have any method name, doesn't matter. But still, let's give it proper. And we have to also import this. Okay, let's set the URL. So we are going for the get mapping because we are going for the get method. So get mapping and the URL will be products. So the actual URL will be API slash products. So we are seeing this for the first time in this particular or the last video and this video, but we are using the request mapping on top of the controller. So basically whenever you talk about this controller, this controller follows slash API slash products. Okay, so now let's return the products. Now, but who will do that? Of course, we don't want your controller to talk to your database directly, right? So we need some layers in between. So I want my service layer, so I will have a service object here, and I will say, hey, get me all products. But unfortunately, we don't even have this object. We don't have a service object. So let's do that quickly because now we know how do we create those layers, how do, what annotation we use. So I will go back here in the service package. I will say new Java class, and this will be product service. And this product service will have an annotation called service. Now, since we have this as a service, I can create a reference here by saying a private product service, and I will say service. Of course, I can use field injection here, which is on top of the uh, variable, or you can use a constructor, or you can use setter to do that. I will use field injection, not a good idea, but uh, it looks, it keeps your code smaller. I would encourage you to use uh, this uh, constructor injection. So create a constructor for controller or a setter in the controller and then implement it. Okay, so now uh, we got this auto wired, so I can simply use this, but I don't have this method called get all products in the, in the service. So I will ask my ID, hey, you know, I want this method in the product service. It will say, okay, we'll do that, but give me the code. But again, I don't want service to talk to database and I don't even want to return the hard coded values. So this is where you need to uh, basically create object of the repo. We don't have it. So in the repo, let me create a interface, class or interface. We have talked about this before. So basically we have to get the interface and here we'll say product repo or repository, whatever name you want to give. And we got it. And this will basically extends JPA repository, which will take two, two uh, types. One is a type of class you're working with or a type of entity you're working with. And next is your primary key. The primary key is of type integer. So let's stick to it. And now let's have the methods. In fact, we don't need to add methods because we have that from JPA repository, right? We can simply use those methods in the service, but we need to use an annotation called repository. Again, I'm going a bit fast because we have talked about this in the previous sections. So let's talk about product service here. And now in this, let's create the object for product repo. I will say repo. And on top of this, we have to say auto wired. Okay, now once you got your repo, I can simply call the methods, right? So I can say, hey, repo, uh, you will be having some methods to give me all the products. So it has, it has find all. Uh, and then this will return you the list of products. So I have to say return the list of products. So simple, right? Uh, so database says, I'm done, we have a database already. Service layer says, okay, I will get it from the repo. Repo says, okay, I will get it from the database. Controller says, okay, I will get it from service. And it will return the products to the user. That's what we're expecting, right? And expectation is not a bad thing. So let's try, let's try. Let's see what goes wrong and what goes right. If something goes wrong, we'll correct it. So let's get back to the browser. And here, let's say refresh. It worked, okay, we got uh, empty array. 
Reason is because we, the table, the database itself is empty. How do we get uh, it solved? Okay, so what we can do is we can add some data in database. Of course, we have multiple ways of doing that. One, uh, you can basically add the product from the, from the page here. There should be add button. Uh, but I can't see that. I have this button here, nothing is working. But let me just refresh this. Still not working, okay? There's something still broken. We'll solve this. We'll solve this problem. Uh, but then we want some data when you actually hit this URL. I want to see that here so that I can use it in my front end. In fact, I also want to check this in the Postman. So I'll click on send. Uh, it says not found because I have to hit the API. If I click on send, it says method not allowed. Okay, we are using post, my bad. I will say get and we got empty. Okay, so we want to have some data in database. How are we going to do that? So multiple ways are there. As I mentioned, you can have a button in your page or you can go to S2 console and from here, you can insert some statement. But there's one problem, you know, if you insert the queries from here, from your H2, okay, I will show you. What I will do is I do have the query ready with me. Okay, and this is some random data which I have about cars. So I'll just use that query here. Uh, so I can, you can see I can, I'm adding different cars here. Again, all this data is given by my team. So I'm, I have not actually read what they're talking about cars, what is their perspective towards car. Uh, but yeah, so we got this, we got uh, Tata Nexon, uh, Swift, Creta, Thar, so we have different cars here. So I want to add this data. So when I click on run, of course you will have this data in database, but we got an error. It says description not found. Okay, so basically we are using uh, DESC and my team is using description. So let me just use that. Okay, so now let's run this and okay. It says product available. Okay, there are a lot of changes in the query. So we'll say available. Also there should be issue with uh, the quantity because I'm using quantity and click on run. Okay, still missing ID, 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 ID. Okay, it should be auto-generated. I have not done that. So basically, uh, it says not null because in the query, I'm not assigning the ID if you can see. I'm as I was assuming that it will be auto-generated. And for that, we have to do something. So let's get back to the code. And this is how you do development, right? Nothing is straightforward. So here, I will mention that I want to do auto-generation. So for that, I will use generated value annotation from JPA persistence. And here, I'll mention my strategy, which is control space, generated type identity, okay? So now we have to restart the application. So it will reload your S2 basically. Okay, that's done. Let's get back to this. I will also copy this so that I don't have to type it again. Refresh, connect, and paste. And this time it should work, and it worked. Can you see that? It says something, updated count five. I will check that the database, okay, we have to fire the query to get the data. So I will say, I will just have it somewhere. Where should I keep it? I'll keep that in Sublime. Okay, Sublime is messed up with this. <laughs> okay, uh, not copied properly. Okay, no issue, let's, let's make the changes later. But uh, I want to remove this now. I will just keep it copied. And I will say select star from uh, product. And now if I run this, we got the list of uh, cars. But I want these cars on the browser. So I'll go back to the browser, which is I'm already in, refresh, and you can see we got the data now. So this data is actually coming from database. But one thing if you realize, the format of the date is not something I want. I want a simple date format where I will see the day first, then month, and then year. So we want DD, MM, Y, 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 feature of the format. Okay, so how do we do this? So we'll do the format thing later. Uh, currently what I'm gonna do is, if I restart, okay, if I, where's my ID? Did I lost my ID? I don't want Sublime, close it, don't save. Okay, we got the ID, it should be full screen. Okay, so now if I restart the application, see what happens. Every time you restart the application, and if you see the data, it's gone. Even in H2, it is gone now. It's because H2 is a temporary database, right? So every time you restart, you will lose the data. We don't have this data here now. I can run the select query for you. So uh, not start the list go products. And if I click on run, it says product is not there. It is product run. Okay, so you can see it is empty now. So 
how do we solve this problem? I don't want to uh, insert the data every time I run this project. So what I want to do is I want to create some default data. So one thing you can do is you can click right click on the resources and say new, create a file and name it as data.sql. So basically your H2 will load this and what should be the query? It is this uh, product, product. I don't know why we got this two times. We'll just have it on the, okay, there's some spacing issue is there. Okay, but you got the point, right? We got this data here in this data.sql. And now what we'll do is we'll restart the application and see the magic. Magic got an error, you will get something. And we got the error. Okay, now this is not, this was not the issue till Spring 2.7, the problem, uh, Spring Boot 2.7, it started after that. So basically there's a problem where uh, it searches for the table, but the table, create late, table is created later, and it's trying to insert data where the table is not there. So I want to delay this process of initializing. So what I can do is to delay that, we have to set one more property, which is spring dot JPA dot defer data source initialization, and we'll keep it true. So basically data initialization should be later, first it will create a table, okay? So we'll set this property true so that now it will not be confused. It knows the sequence properly. So now if I run this and there should not be an issue, okay, it's working, it, it created a table and it will also load it. So I'll go back to my thing and run, okay connect once again because the database got recreated. Uh, run and you can see we got data. Let's also check in this, refresh and we got the data. But we don't want this data here. We want this data in the React and it still says something went wrong. How do we solve this? How do we solve this problem? And let's try to understand that in the next video. So we'll try, we'll try to connect this and also we'll try to understand how do we get that data format which we want. And let's see you in the next video. Bye-bye.